since last weekend. Uh, I haven't felt anything quite as strong in a long time as I felt this message this morning. And I, I want to take my time trying to preach it to you. But man, I'm telling you, I, I, I feel an urgency. I feel an urgency to preach to you this morning. Matthew 27, verse number 1. I remember that old song, Are You Ready? Are you ready for a judgment day? Amen. I, I want to be ready, don't you? I, 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 I want to be ready. They sung a song in Allentown one time. I can't remember. They sung it in the choir. Ready to do his will. Ready to his purpose to fulfill. And uh, that, I want that to be my heart's yearning and desire. Do the will of the Lord. Matthew 27, verse number 1. The morning was come. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. When they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, we saw that he was condemned, repented himself, and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple, and departed, and went, and hanged himself. Now, now notice the great tragedy of all this. Judas realized what he had done. His grief, his the horror and the anguish of what had came to pass, cost him so much. He had thirty pieces of silver for life. Again, what a trade. What a trade. Lord, help us this morning. I want to talk to you about counting the cost. Amen. Counting the cost. I remember as a, as a young boy or as a young teenager growing up, uh, my granddaddy had passed away and uh, he had a, a Chevy Love pickup. Mr. Bobby, and, and you can, that thing's so little. You, you can about sit in the driver's seat and put your hand out the passenger window. I mean, it's tiny. You ever see these little trucks nowadays? And uh, uh, that, that shed was uh, smaller than them. And uh, as, as my brother turned 16, he, uh, he, he inherited that truck. And we had a grass cutting business, me and him together. And uh, we put our lawnmower on the trailer. We go around town cutting grass. And uh, there's a man there in town that uh, had an old used car lot. I remember we, we cut that car lot for him. In the corner of that car lot, he had a green and white Ford Curry. He wanted $1,500 for it. Man, that's big money. And uh, I remember all that summer long, I didn't spend my money on anything. But I kept it. Everything I got, I put up hoping to buy that truck. And I, I remember sometimes I sit down and I count all my money out thinking maybe I miscounted. Maybe I got more than what I thought I had, but it always came out the same, Brother Herschel. I remember the day that I got enough, and I went to that man, I bought that truck, and uh, one of the greatest feelings I believe I ever had was when he handed me that title and I knew I had worked and bought and paid for that vehicle. I mean, it meant something to me. I counted the cost day after day. I figured up how many yards we have to cut. I figured up how much money I have to save each week to try to be able to purchase that vehicle. And to have earthly pleasure, it's going to cost us something. Amen. Have you ever heard the saying, there's nothing in life free? And then you get emails, you get texts, uh, uh, people call you and say, I got something free for you. I want to give you something. But you can almost be guaranteed that somewhere in there, there's an underlying cost. 
It's going to cost you something. Maybe it's going to cost you your time. Talk about these time shares. Come stay. Ain't going to cost you nothing. I cost you four or five hours to listen to a promotion. And it might cost you 30 minutes. I don't know. But it's going to cost you something in the long run. And the Bible says in Luke chapter number 14 and in verse number 28, For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and count the cost where he has sufficient to finish it? Amen. People sit down and they try to itemize and they try to set budgets so they might be able to obtain goals in life. And we must count the cost if we're ever going to have pleasures in this life. And then count the cost of what it's going to cost us not only to our mortal soul or to our or to our carnal side, but what it's going to cost us in eternity. And then what the price will have to pay with our eternal soul. I thought about, hey man, uh, uh, Mr. Bobby being a mechanic, you probably heard this a lot of times. I pull up to your yard and say, man, I got to have my car. It's tore up. I don't know what I'm going to do without it. Got to have it fixed. How uh, can you look at it? But before you do anything to it, let me know how much it's going to cost. And before you go out and buy the parts, before you go out and start working on it, let me know what the cost is going to be. And we have to count those costs. But there's also eternal pleasure. And in that eternity with God, even in that celestial city, in that place where there will be no more sorrow and no more pain. The book of Matthew tells us, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I wonder how many have fell for the bad bargain that the devil has offered them, and in the pleasures of this world, they have exchanged for their eternal soul. And then they've given up their relationship with God, and then they've given up following the Lord for momentary gain and pleasure. And then Moses said, I'd rather suffer affliction with God's people, and then in the pleasures of sin for a season. He knew that pleasure had its end. He knew that sin would have its reward. But he knew to suffer with God's people and remain faithful to the Lord that one day would pay off. I'm glad there's going to be a payday one day, aren't you? I said I'm glad there's going to be a payday one day. And in Matthew chapter number 5 verse 29, If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And it sounds kind of grotesque, doesn't it? And it sounds like you're going overboard of what the man's trying to get us to realize is the value of our eternal soul and the value of our relationship with God. I begin to read the Bible and I begin to think about Judas and what he did here. I begin to think about this horrific act of betraying the very Son of God and uh, how it all came to pass and how it all panned out. I begin to think about the life of Judas and what might have caused him to do such a horrible act. I thought about his beginning. You know, Judas started off right. And he started off just like the others. He was called to serve the Lord. He came out among, from among family and friends. He took up that cross uh, and he began to walk after Jesus Christ. And he was there when they ridiculed him. He was there when they talked about him. He was there on different occasions, no doubt, when their lives were in jeopardy. And he was a follower of Christ. And can you imagine what? Walking into a city, even as Jesus came with healing, as Jesus came with that message of the new covenant, even telling people about a better way, even there was Judas in the midst. I wonder how many blinded eyes that he saw open. Amen. Can you imagine if Judas had stayed right with God? Amen. He was here in the day the testimony that he would have. Amen. Here I was, a man. I
Jesus speak to that too. And he said, roll that stone away. And they rolled back that stone. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And then grave could not hold him. And the voice of God. And then Lazarus came walking out. And one man said, Jesus had to say, Lazarus, come forth. Because if he said, just come forth. And they don't know what to do. 
and they have to apologize whatever. But there's some people just plain mean. And they'll do something, don't care how much it hurts somebody. They don't care what cost it might be their person or their family. Amen. They just got, just got meanness in them. My grandma would say, Amen. Pure ugly. That's what, what she'd say sometimes. They just pure ugly. Amen. A mean to the core. Right? Rotten to the core. Amen. That's not what they say. And it wasn't malice in the heart of Judas. I, I began to think about that. And I thought, what kind of mentality? After he had followed this man. Amen. After he had done all these things. After he seen worth the miracles. What kind of hatred for God could enter into a man's heart. Amen. To make him do what he done. And now this is just my perspective. Amen, Brother Jim. Chapter 1, verse 1. Of how I feel like it might have transpired. Every time he saw those blinded eyes open. And every miracle that he saw, no doubt, was in his mind. But think about all the times Jesus escaped. He's in the temple. And they sought to kill him. What happened? Amen. Jesus got away. Amen. Here they were. They had those stones. And they were about to cast them at him. And what happened? He got away. Amen. Not only did Judas see miracles, he saw the ability of Christ. Amen. To get out of the predicament. He saw the ability that he had. Amen. To get out of what they had in him. He escaped for his life time and time again. At the feast, they sought to kill him. And Jesus escaped again for his time. Was not yet come. Amen. I don't think he was malice in his heart. I don't think he was rotten to the core. Or just mean. And he wanted to see Christ die on the cross. Who wanted to see him dead? Hey, you know what it was? Hey, man, it was money. It was greed. It was lust. Hey, man, it was that desire for something else. It was that desire to have something. They felt that like they had to betray Christ. To have. Hey, man, don't misunderstand me. What he done was rock. And what he done was wrong. I believe Judas thought that he'd get out of it. Hey, and he didn't sit down and count the cost. Hey, and don't you think that he had that mindset? And when all those soldiers gathered around him, and Judas betrayed him with that kiss, but don't you think that this is how I think? Maybe he stepped back and said, now he's going to escape. They'll never take him. They haven't been able to before. Hey, and somehow he's going to work a miracle. And when they go that place, uh, and then when they go to take him away, uh, he'll get away at the end. Uh, but it didn't happen like that that time. Uh, amen. Jesus said the hour now is fulfilled. Uh, amen. They cast him uh, or they locked him up and took him away to the hall of Pilate. Uh, amen. And when Judas saw that he was condemned, uh, that down that old rugged cross, uh, that hit the heart of Judas so hard uh, that he took that dirty piece of the silver. Uh, you imagine as you walk back to that temple, uh, uh, saying, what have I done? Uh, hey, man, what have I gotten myself into? Uh, have you ever been there? Uh, have you ever heard those words? Uh, what have I done to ruin my relationship with God? Uh, what have I done to get in the predicament that I am? Uh, hey, man, when he got there, he cast those down. Uh, and he said, I want no part of this blood money. Uh, hey, man, the innocent blood of Christ. Uh, betrayed. Uh, and they said, what do we have to do you? Uh, oh, if you see now to it, uh, it's not on our hands anymore, Judas, uh, but it's in your hands. Uh, he was so grieved at heart. Uh, and the Bible said he went out and he hung himself. Hey, Amen. You know what? He didn't sit down and count cost. Hey, Amen. He didn't sit down. Hey, Amen. Think about what that one moment of pleasure. He didn't sit down and think about what that one instant in sin was going to eventually cost him. I mean, do we? I said, do we? We've got that mentality. Hey, man, if I do it, I get forgiveness. Hey, man, I know God's a merciful God. He's a gracious God. Hey, man, I know he forgives and we have a mediator. Hey, man, an advocate with the Father if we sin. Oh, but what if we don't have time? Hey, man, what if that sin takes control of us? Hey, man, what if we get so caught up? Hey, man, what the prodigal son do? 
His heart was broken. Look at what he had done. Look at what it had cost him. The Savior. He was so overwhelmed. I've been there. I've been to points where I can't say I've ever been there. I wasn't sitting on one. She's so overwhelmed, you think? He's just there. It's just forget about everything. She doesn't All the times I've walked there, I've thanked God for the mercy. Mercy of the Lord. Amen. My grandma heard her testify one time about suicide and about sin. I didn't know anything about hell. I don't know if I can do that. I let my family down. I let my grandma down. Thank God. You know what you think? That when Judas saw that, he broke his heart. I'm saying, look back and look off again and some sin. He said, it's still. I look back on my baby brother. I think to myself, my long time. I'm telling you, whatever it is that's hindering you in your race, it's going to cost you far more than you want to pay. You better count the cost. Thank you, people. This is my. Go to heaven, Lord, but nobody wants to die. How many got this morning really preparing for death? Yeah, this is the day. This is it. When I think about living, I think about being 102, 103 one day. Lord Terry. Come on, man. We make we make plans for the future. Plans what we're gonna do next week, plans what we're gonna do next month, plan on going somewhere in February. And we're gonna get things ready. But more than that, when I sit down and look at all the sin in the world, and all the things that have been sent people and, and lured them away from God, look at my family, and I count the cost. I say, I gotta protect my children. I gotta stay in church. For myself and for them. I can't afford not to pray. I lose that. They lose that. I can't afford not to stay faithful. My children are falling behind me. But Joe, we can't afford to let anything get in our way. So, the Lord. I'm not saying it's money this morning. It could be. I felt the Lord move on my heart. The Bible says, let's run that way, grace with patience. See, when it's passed about by such a great cloud of witnesses, let's lay aside every weight and the sin that just so easily beset us. Lord, do you good this morning? Lay some things off and, and, and say to yourself, is it worth sinking the ship over? Let me get rid of it so I can still on. Let me put it aside so I can live for God and head down with that cloud. And I'm telling you, I'll hear this message on my phone. And I wish I could do better to get it to you. 
But I tell you, Lord loves you this morning so much that for a whole week, this is all I can think about. For a whole week, every time I pray, Lord just quickened my heart. I said, pray to see the cost. What it's going to cost me. Those moments, that time, those things. How much? They said the lady at Pompeii, when Pompeii, the, earth, the uh, volcano erupted, said they went back years later and, and began to dig up artifacts and things. And there was a lady they found that was, she'd been written fossilized, whatever you call that. She, uh, she, uh, the, the, the uh, ashes had, had preserved her body. Miss Kathy, you see, when they found her, said her, her that, that, that the chronicles had, had, had talked about the people running away, but it looked like she went back home came back with her jewels and her riches. And there she was, just feet away from escape, the dead, all the things of life. Lot's wife, I know Solomon, man, she's, she's made it. Thank God, come on, Lot. Can you imagine? Lot's running out with her. All of a sudden, stop here. All of a sudden, Couldn't look back. The Bible said not to look back. Never did why. I wonder why I ever think when I didn't look down the She'd still be with me. You ever think about that? Maybe the altar's open. Every head just pray. Every head bow. Maybe I told you, Heavenly Father, you know this congregation. And you know every heart that's here. And Lord, I ask you this morning, would you touch somebody? Lord, let us look at ourselves, examine our lives, and ask ourselves, is what I'm doing, what I'm indulging in, what I'm taking pleasure in, is it worth losing out with the Lord? Is it worth losing my eternal soul? Not studying, not praying, not, not being devoted to God. Is it worth those moments of pleasure, indulging the flesh? Is it worth losing my relationship? It costs you far more than you want to pay. You hear me? It costs you far more than you want to pay. The altar's open. I'm not going to single you out. I ask you to raise your hand. You know who you are. You know where you stand with the Lord this morning. I want you to ask yourself, what can I do for you? What can I do? Would you come? The altar's open. Would you like to pray this morning? Would you like to pray? We can go through the motions and we can act like nothing's wrong. And to us it might not be. We might see and say, oh man, they're great. I, I'm not men, but I, I've heard preach and I've heard I've been in church building and thought, man, man, wow. And hear what they was doing and thought, how in the world? They fooled me. Don't try to fool God. Come clean. Come clean. Everybody who let's come together this morning, ask the Lord to help us. Ask the Lord to help us. Oh, Lord. My God.